Yeah, I am. Okay. Okay, we're on Zoom now. Um, uh, we're recording right now. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this time. And Lord, we ask, oh God, give us a greater degree of wisdom, a greater degree of understanding. Show us, oh God, um, as we learn how to... Um, uh, to intercept the blockades that go on in our lives that prevent us from coming deeper into you, Lord. And as we learn about intercept, intercepting blockades in our lives, show us how to, to help people intercept blockades in their lives. Use us, raise us up as healing and deliverance ministers, oh God. Raise us up, Lord, Lord and to a higher and to a greater level. And we ask this in your precious name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So hopefully Maggie will join us. Margarita will join us in a few minutes and Will will join us as well. So if you are able to, I would highly suggest and recommend getting this book. It's called Prayers That Heal the Heart by Mark Verkler. And tonight I'm going to teach out of this book. Yeah. Um, I'm going to teach out of this book. I tried to find a video or an audio recording that was going to be as really specific to this topic, and I could not. So I just went into the book and I just pulled out information from there. So, but it's it's well re worth the read. In fact, Carol, my sister Carol, had posted you posted the um, the video recordings, didn't you, on um, on our group page? So if you want to go back and watch some of his videos. Uh, we did a, a nine or a 10 week Bible study. Uh, I was looking back at the dates and it was in 2015, about seven years ago when I taught that, you know, when I had a little home, when I had that home Bible study in my house and, and um, yeah, it's amazing, but um, how, many, how many years ago, but anyway, he's really good. And uh, so I would, I recommend him. So, so what you to say it again, please. Prayers that heal the heart. Okay, okay. And it's by Mark and Patty Verkler, his wife. Mark and Patty. Mm -hmm. V I R K L E R. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. So we're going to start. So every one of us is a spirit. Every one of us is a spirit. And we have a soul and we live in a body. I think we all, if, if we listen to basic church doctrine, we know that. That we are a spirit who has a soul and we live in our bodies. And for the believers, our spirits have been joined to Holy Spirit. In reality, our innermost being is joined to the almighty God through the wonderful miracle of grace. Through our faith as we surrender our lives to Yeshua, to Jesus. And I, I'll come up front and tell you guys that this is where I stand and I don't, and it's okay, but I just wanted to express my own opinion to you. I don't believe that we need to, ex I don't believe that we should accept Christ. He's not accepted. What we need to do is surrender him to our, surrender our lives to the Lord. When you accept someone in your life, you're making them part of your life, but you're not surrendering your whole life to him. And to be a, a, a truly a believer in Yeshua, in Jesus, you, you must come to the place of complete surrender, surrendering every part of your life to the Lord. Now, Because I know that Hindus and other people of uh, uh, many pagan beliefs in the, in the ancient times, the Romans and the Greeks, they believed in Jesus, but he was one of many gods. So there's a difference. There's a, a huge difference. And also, even in our society, we can, um, you know, we can, oh, yeah, I'm a believer in, I, how many people, how many times have you met somebody? Yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I believe in Jesus, but their lives don't look like it. You know, they're, they're living in sin, their lives, not just living in sin, their lives are a mess, you know? <laughs> And, uh, and they don't talk about the Lord, you know, they don't know the Lord, they don't read their Bibles. Yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm going to go to heaven when I die. I, I'm not the one to say that they whether they are or not, but someone who is truly a believer in, in Yeshua in Jesus is one who has surrendered their lives to Jesus, not accepted him as part of their lives. So that's, that's my own little uh, sermon. I, I won't charge for it. So it's a free little sermon. <laughs> So who would like to look up 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
verses 17 and 29. Not 17 through 29, 17 and 29. I don't even have my Bible, just a second. First Corinthians chapter six, verse two verses, six, 17 and 29. Six, seventeen. Did you, right, you want to, do you want to read it? This is the. Uh, First Corinthians. Okay, uh, but the one who is yeah. united First Corinthians. to the Lord is one spirit with him. Could you hear that? You read it again, Art. But the one who is united and joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Amen. And you know what? There's no 29. I was just going to say that. Ah! <laughs> where, did, where did Mark get that? Okay, well, we're going to ignore that then. Or maybe you should read 19. That's the last verse. What was the first one? I can find it. Yes, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Oh, 17. Oh. First Corinthians. Yeah, what now um You're in our, what Corinthians. version was that that you were reading out of? Chapter 6. This is amplified version. Oh, the I should have known you're you're, you're amplified. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um Nicole, what version of Bible do you have? What? New King James. Okay, uh, read out of the New King James. And 19. 17? Just 17. When he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Yes. So that's basically that that's basically the, the, the whole thrust of this is that we are one spirit. We are joined, we are united with Holy him. Spirit when we give our lives over to the Lord, when we surrender our lives. So as the light of God fills more of an individual, Satan's darkness is progressively driven out. This is sanctification, and this is an ongoing, an ongoing process, and it will continue until the day when we go to meet with the Lord at the time we die. That this is, um, we're not going to have it all together until we meet the Lord in glory. You know, not, uh, none of us, no matter how great of a Christian you may um, follow, you know, some of the great teachers. And the great preachers, the great evangelists, outreach workers are the most humblest of people. None of us have it all together until we get to heaven. And then we will. Right. Uh, and also one thing, too, is that uh, we really need to realize, and I know Lynn and I have talked about this at length at different times, is that we are healed in layers. Like an onion is constantly getting peeled and getting peeled and getting peeled. And so we may go around that same mountain over and over and over again uh, and go over the same places of healing where we've been before. The Lord will continue to take us through them until we're completely healed. And each time we are taken to a deeper level of healing. So here we are, have to go around the mountain again and again and again and again. <laughs> And again, so the, the Holy Spirit ministers the abiding realities of God into our beings. Things like faith, hope, love, joy, peace, power, purpose, dream, vision, anointing, and everything else that, that God is. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there are the, what, he, what Mark Berkler calls the negative energies that have to be dealt with. These negative energies are doubt, fear, anger, guilt, depression, madness, death, and anything else that lines up with the name of Satan or his demons. Well, and we, could you just repeat that one more time, what you just said? Both, both uh, the, 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 the Holy Spirit or just the one about the devil? The negative about and the devil. The one about the devil. Okay. And Sylvia, I'm sorry, you, what did you want? Negative energies. Okay, the negative energies. There are negative energies that have to be dealt with. Doubt, fear, anger, guilt, depression, madness, death, and anything else that lines up with the name of Satan or any of his demons. 
Does that make sense? And he calls them, he, I, Mark Verkler identifies them as negative energy. Hey, excuse me. Bless you. Thank so, you. So we can take a barometric reading of our hearts to see how well we are doing. And if the presence of negative demonic energies is thriving, or if godly positive power saturates our hearts and our minds. So there's power versus negative, our sin or negative energy. And sin energy, he, he kind of goes into detail about the word energy uh, because it's used very uh, strongly in the New Age movement. And, and they, then they attribute that kind of energy as good stuff, but it's not really. Um, and so he uses that word energy for to identify a sin energy or negative energy. Sin energy, it describes the influences, both negative or positive, operating within us that puts pressure on us to move in a particular direction. In the Greek, the word energy is energes, E-N-E-R-G-E-S, or energes, or energia, E-N-E-R-G-E-I-A, for those who are, want to look up Koine Greek. Um, so those, that, those are the two words that describe energy. And of course, energy comes out of that word. This word was used in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 and 11. So second, we're not going to look it up, but 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 and 11, that word energes or energia or energy is used. And it just it describes the working of Satan and the working of error or delusion. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 12, uses the word energu or energu, E-N-E-R-G-E-W, when it describes the death that's working out among us. I think we're familiar with that scripture, with the scripture about death working among us. So that's in 2 Corinthians 4.12. 4, 12. I got wrong one. 4.12. Yeah, 4.12. 2 Corinthians 4.12. So power is the Greek word dunamis. We, we, I think we, a lot of us have heard that word dunamis, which is uh, our word dynamite comes out of, or ex exousia, and this explosion of power. Uh, Verkler doesn't mention this in the book, but I believe these words describe God's power, where both the above, the above words for energy comes from our own strength, like energy comes from our strength and power comes from him above, you know, exousia or dunamis. I believe we need the Lord's dunamis, we need the, his explosive power and the Lord's exousia to go forward in our lives. We all have something the world does not have. All of us, every one of us, how many of you have given surrender? Like I, I explained at the beginning of this class, what's, uh, what it means to surrender your life to the Lord. How many of you surrendered your lives to the Lord? So in uh, Margarita and uh, Sylvia, I just take it that you raised your hands too. <laughs> so you have surrendered your life to the Lord. And if, if, and when you surrender your life to the Lord, you now, every single one of us who have done that, we have the ability to tap into the Lord's power to take authority over every, anything negative in our lives, especially ne demonic influences. Now we have that ability but many of us don't know that we have that ability. The mm. problem is the devil lies to us. And he, and, he gets, and he gets us to believe that we don't have power, but we do. The devil tries to get us to believe that we don't have authority where we do. We do. How many of you, I know, I know that you probably did this, Nicole, and I know Margarita has done this, um, and probably Lynn too, and maybe Sylvia too. Um, how many of you, uh, you wake up from a bad dream or you feel something in your house that's not quite right? How many of you just grab that bo bottle of oil and just command that thing to go in the name of Jesus? How many mm. of you have done that? I'm starting to do that more. Do it every day as much yeah. as you can. I'm starting to do that more. Yeah. yeah. Cast it out. Cast it out. In Jesus' name. 
any kind of negative thoughts, any kind of negative feeling, whatever it is to say, I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Take authority over it. Right. So negative energies can come from several different places. The possible roots of negative energies. Generation number one was generational sins and curses passed down through the family line. Number two, ungodly soul ties stemming from covenant or contractual relationships also passed down through the family line or passed down through sin. Now, we've talked about that in previous weeks. We, we, uh, we talked about generational sin. We talked about word curses and we talked about soul ties and all of that can be passed down. And that can and that could be the basis of negative energies. Tonight, we're going to talk about the other two. which is negative expectations or negative belief systems that generate sin energies, which pressure us towards acts of sin. You know, they don't, they kind of draw us and like a drive in us to, um, to, to sin. And there's also inner vows, which galvanize one's purpose in life and release sin energies and pressures in the light of the vow. So those are two different things, but they're, they're closely connected. There are two different things, the negative expectations or negative belief systems. And then what we do as a result is inner vows. And we'll talk about, and we're going to do some, uh, we, we, I wanted you guys to have that worksheet. So we're going to do a practice session in a little, in a few minutes. And we'll uh, start praying about, you know, th- things that happened in our life, whether in the past or what, whatever we're struggling with right now. And we're going to do an individual. Um, we're going to do this individually. Not we're not. I'm not breaking you up into into um, into Zoom rooms. So tonight we're going to study the last two on this list. We're going to talk about negative expectations or negative belief systems, and we're also going to talk about inner vows. So, what does it mean about negative expectations? Our negative belief systems that generate sin energies, which pre- I'm sorry, negative expectations are, are negative belief systems that generate sin energies, which pressure one towards acts of sin. Does that make sense? So negative expectations are negative belief systems that generate sin energies, which pressure one toward acts of sins. I just moved my microphone a little closer. Is that easy, better for you, Carol? Yeah. I, yeah. I see that you're kind of like getting really close to the computer <laughs> here. <laughs> I don't want to miss anything. Don't want to miss anything. And also, this is being recorded, too, so you can go back and watch the recording. Good, 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 good. So a negative expectation is a negative belief system, belief system, which has been established in your heart somewhere along the way in your life. Negative expectations can be against yourself or against others or authorities or institutions or even God, even your thoughts of God. Most of these are established on the unconscious level. You don't even realize that you have this. Sometimes you don't, many times you don't realize you have this. So we are generally not even aware that we are holding negative belief systems or negative expectations. Yet they all must be repented of so they can be broken in our lives and we can be set free from them. In a sense, these negative expectations, these negative belief systems, they lock you in jail. They hold Hmm. you in jail. They hold you hostage. Hmm. Negative expectations can come from word curses spoken over you or even word curses that you spoke over yourself. For instance, someone may tell you that you are stupid, or you may even tell yourself that you're stupid. And this word curse will likely produce a negative expectation that you should act like you're stupid, that you're not smart. I'm gonna give you an example that Dr. Verkler gave, Mark Verkler gave. When Dr. Verkler was in school, when he was in college, He would say things like, I am a B-level student. He would say that over and over again. I am a B-level student. The alphabet and I don't get together, get along together. I'm sorry, the alphabet and I don't get along together. 
I cannot spell. Obviously, these curses activated lies in him, setting negative forces within him. He was convinced that he was only an average student who could not spell. Therefore, anytime he needed to learn anything or he was really he needed to spell something out, this expectation would only be up to a certain level for him. It would automatically, automatically he would cancel it out and he would misspell. We can believe in a whole host of negative expectations in er any or every area of our lives. Negative expectations activate the law of sowing and reaping. Who's, who has heard the, um, about that? Have you heard, has it been taught in your churches, the law of sowing and reaping? Yes. What you, sow, you shall reap? Yes. 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 Well, not just money. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. yes, it can be in every part of your life, yes. every part. So just as, as we reap what we sow in the positive light, you know, we tithe and, and then we receive a blessing when we tithe, we can also reap what we sow in the negative light. Mm -hmm. I want to share with you a, a, still, a little bit of an instance that I had um, one time when I was ministering in downtown Hartford. Uh, there was a local church that asked us to, uh, to ask me to, uh, to set up a prayer room there. And so I, I got, I eagerly, gladly got all my prayer partners and we had a little prayer room at this outreach um, that they had at their church. And when I, and so during that time, a homeless man came up to me and he was looking for prayer in, the, in our prayer room. So when I went up to him, he, by the way, he was skinny. His clothes were in rags. I mean, he was, a, he was a mess and he really smelled bad. I mean, really smelled bad. And uh, so he came up to me and it, just as soon as I started praying, the Lord told me that he was once in full-time ministry hmm. one time, at one time. I, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I knew that that's what the Lord told me to tell him, that he was in full-time ministry. So as soon as I, um, so I told him that, and as soon as I told him that, the man began to cry. He began to sob and cry. It was true. Um, when he was a young man, when he was a young man, he was an associate pastor in a, in a local city church. His father was the senior pastor. So he was serving with his father in full-time ministry. And as a young man, he judged and he criticized homeless people, especially mm -hmm. those who were caught up in addictions. He was very critical of them. Of course, you know, Hartford's full of them. And, um, but yeah, he was very critical. He did not want to have anything to do with them. And he judged them. He thought, oh my gosh, what, you know, why can't they get their lives together and all this? Mm. And, but then all of a sudden, it was not all of a sudden, it was slowly, the, the, the table was turned. And here he was, he was homeless. Now he was an addict. What he was mm. judging others for, it was now him. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. man had ended up sowing what he reaped. I'm sorry, yeah. he reaped what he sowed. Yeah. And through his wow. critical attitude. And he was and he repented of that when we were praying. So and I don't know what happened to that man, but I believe that I'm totally believing that that man has got in, his was on his way to get his life back in order. Amen. Amen. So Amen. That, that's a that's an example of what you reap what you sow in um in negative energies and negative expectations. Mm. Yeah, in Galatians 6-7, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he shall reap. That's Galatians 6 7. God is not mocked. For whatever oh. a man sows, that he shall reap. He shall reap. Right. Wow. And in Hosea 10, 12, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. And mm -hmm. Job 4, 8, even as I have seen that they may plow iniquity and sow wickedness, reap, reap the same. When they plow in iniquity mm -hmm. and sow in wickedness, they shall reap the same. What's that scripture again? That was Hosea 4, 8. Yeah, say a four eight, and negative expectations activate the law of multiplication. 
You know, Hosea 8, 7 says, for they sowed the wind and reaped the whirlwind. We were, many of us are familiar with that scripture. So whenever a negative expectation is sown, <clears throat> that's when they reap the, is like the whirlwind. The seed that you sow may seem small, but you will reap an entire crop of anything that you sown. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So like, you know, just like I've been starting to get back into gardening, I like now I'm able to do this and you just plant these little tiny seeds and they grow up into plants that produce yeah. much, you know, much more, uh, many more vegetables or fruits or whatever you're, you're planting. And this is the same way. It's, there's a multiplication. So even a small little uh, negative word or a negative thought, you know, you might even, you might even think it's innocent. Um, but it's good. You're going to like those who sow to the wind will reap the whirlwind. It's so mm. true. So, you know, we really like what, what it says in the book of James, we really need to watch wh what comes out of our mouth for out mm -hmm. of our mouth, we speak death and life. Mm -hmm. And we are, and the Lord has called us to be co-creators with him. So what we're doing, so when you're praying and when you're speaking blessings, you're bringing forth life. And when you're speaking forth curses, you're bringing forth death. So remember the law of delay. Don't be deceived. Give the law time to work and to come to the harvest. It may take some time. And that goes especially for the positive. You know, we pray and we pray and we pray. And it seems like years and decades go by. Even a lifetime goes by. Nothing's happening. But you don't know what's going to happen after you die. You know, one of the things that I taught um, my, the intercessors in my house of prayer is that it's a scientific fact that even though we will live and we die, every word that we speak is still in the atmosphere. It never leaves. The sound of our voices, it never leaves. It stays, it stays in the atmosphere forever and ever and ever. So in the spiritual realm, when you are praying, that's why it's so powerful to pray. When you are praying and when you are blessing, it stays forever and ever in the atmosphere. Again, when you are cursing and when you speak negative words, that stays in the atmosphere forever and ever and ever. There's power in the spoken word. Mm -hmm. Power, much more than you can ever dream or imagine. And I'm not, this is not spirit, hyper spiritual, ooey gooey stuff. This is a scientific fact that mm -hmm. your words will stay forever in the atmosphere. I have a question, Audrey. So if, um, so if that's the case, what happens then when we, you know, recognize that we have um, um, utter, utter uh, wrong word and we and we cancel that? We say, you know, I, I, I which I've done it. I said, I, oh, I cancel what I just said. Will it, it is it removed from the atmosphere or it stays? I believe that you removed it because, like I said, you you mm -hmm. are a co-creator with the Lord. The Lord has given you power to speak life words of life and words of death. So right. when you repent and when you cancel, and I pray that you did repent first and then cancel because you have authority. You have right. authority. And so yeah. when you speak, I believe that's taken care of. I totally believe that your that word is taken care of. And then you go out and you proactively bless. You know, what does it say? What does Jesus say? Um, bless those that persecute you. Bless them and do not curse. So, yeah. So um, there is power in the spoken word. But also remember the law of delay. So don't be deceived. Give the law time to work to come to the harvest. It makes some time. It may take some time for the negative expectations to grow, and you may not even be aware of it right now. But if left unchecked, those words that you speak will grow, and it will grow positively or it will grow negatively. Okay, that's negative expectations neg and uh, negative belief systems, and also the power of the spoken word. I kind of went off track on that one, but really, that they do tie together. And now let's talk about inner vows. Inner vows galvanize one's purpose in life and release sin energies and pressures in the light of the vow. Inner vows are the promises or the statements that you make as a result of the negative expectations that you hold. Or it could be positive too, but mostly it's negative. 
Inner vows follow and correspond to the negative expectations that you have. Inner vows generally are made on the unconscious level also. You might not even realize that you just made a vow. I'm going to read, um, again, I, I know that some of you joined us uh, later, but I, when I told about this book, a lot of this teaching that I got, what I'm doing tonight, comes from this book. It's Prayers That Heal the Heart. It's by Mark and Patty Verkler. And I highly recommend that you get this book. It really helped you. I, I was looking, I had the whole teaching, this whole curriculum, and I taught this Bible study about seven years ago. Um, but I was looking and I could not find an audio or a video version of, um, of just this, of the negative expectations and inner vows. So, and I just felt the Lord calling me just to, uh, to teach this to you. So I am going to go down the list as soon as I find the list. <laughs> I thought I put a little, here it is. Okay, uh, can you, well, right here would be a great time to pull up your contributing strands worksheet and turn to pages two and three. Because we're going to do this for ourselves, but I want you to um, see this where it says steps three and four. Yeah. Yes. These are the, okay, column, um, the furthest co column on your left, that is negative expectations. The second column, the vow, is the inner vows on, the, you know, on that one page. And then go over to page three. And up, up at the top left, it says, however God says. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're going to pray. First, you're gonna, we're going to seek the Lord. Okay, what kind of negative expectation we may have? You can write one or you can write 20, as, as many as you want. Uh, and then um, after you do this, we're going to take it one step at a time. Because I know I did this in my Bible study. I had everybody do this all at once and some people got confused. So we're going to do one column at a time. But anyway, after we finish column one and column two, we're going to go back and we're going to pray and ask the Lord what he says about you. And then you will turn this around. And make a, not so much make a vow, but a declaration of who you are. Okay. And what, and we're going to cancel that just as you were asking about that um, earlier, uh, Sylvia. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read some, um, um, just some, uh, some, uh, a little bit of descriptions about that, the negative expectation, the resulting inner vow, because that way you can get a better idea. And then also what, what God says, and then what, um, and what we, uh, what we can do about it. First of all, um, the negative expectation that he wrote was, I'll probably fail. And what is his inner vow when he says, I probably will fail? I'm not even going to try. That's an inner vow, by the way. I probably will fail at what I, what I need to do. But I, and the inner vow, the resulting inner vow is, I won't even try. Prayers to heal the heart. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. And then what is the guys? And then people don't expect, accept me. Oh, this is just a second. I'm, I'm reading this wrong. I'm so, just a second. I'm so sorry. The results of it. Let me go back to this. Wrote it. We know about it. We know about it. Mm -hmm. we'll, get, we'll, we'll get it on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, mom wants to get the book? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good book to read. So he, um, so the negative expectation is I probably will fail. The resulting inner vow is I won't even try. And then how our perception is, is that people are not going to accept me because I'm a failure. And then, and then what you do is you put up an inner, you're going to put, put up a protective wall. Is that, excuse me, I have a question. Yes. Is that the, on the first, uh, he's used, you're giving an example of the, where it says the Lord, but it's what not negative quite, expectations we're contributing to? Right. It's not quite what we're going to do tonight, but um, but it gives you the reason, it gives you that train of thought. I, I thought okay. I was, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do the first two, 
the negative expectation and the inner vow, but we're going to pray about this because we're going to cancel all of those in our lives. Um, we're going to cancel as many as we, mm. as we want to, but it'll give you the perception of what, of what to do. But, um, but this is a, tra um, a trail of what happens. Uh, I, I'm probably going to fail, like, like what Dr. Verkler was saying, that I'm not good. I'm terrible. Mm -hmm. I'm a terrible speller, and I'm only an average student. And I'm not mm -hmm. even going to try. I'm not even going to try because I know that I'm only an average student, and I, will, and I can't spell. Um, and then people are not going to accept me. They don't believe that I can be intelligent. Or smart, and here I got a doctorate. You know, he's got a PhD, um, and then I'll put up a protective wall. I'll protect myself from people. And another one is most marriages fail. So I'm not going to give myself totally. The inner vow is I am not going to give myself totally to my spouse. I'm going to not. I'll just, you know, protect myself. And that also I might. I'm going to be. I must be perfect. And I will try hard. Another one is I'm ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'll hide myself. I know a lot of people who think they're ugly. They wear a, a lot of clothes that are um, not fitting. You know, they're oversized, um, you know, and they wear, they don't reveal any, hardly any of their bodies because they think they're ugly, you know. Um, and so, um, so they hide themselves. And if I'm transparent, I'll get killed. So I'm going to hide my weaknesses. Oh, you know what I'm doing is I'm, there's a two rows. Oh, I'm so sorry. Another one is I'm fat. So I'm just going to be, my inner vow is I'm going to be a couch potato. I'm not going to exercise. I'm fat. I'm overweight, you know, and I'm not going to try. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to sit on the, on the couch and eat and enjoy my food and whatever. I'm no good. So the, uh, the inner vow is I will act out my evil impulses. Another one is I don't deserve a good life. So I won't even try to improve my life. I'm not even going to try. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I don't expect a, a negative expectation. I don't expect financial freedom. So I'm not even going to try to excel financially. I'm not going to save my money. I'm not even going to try. I don't deserve another expect negative expectation is I don't deserve God's blessing. So my inner vow would be I would only make it on my own. Another one is my sin is unforgivable. I don't know how many times have we have you guys ministered to someone who believed that they committed the unforgivable sin. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you ever have that question in your mind, you have not committed. the unforgivable Yeah, sin. yeah. Yeah. You have any guilt in you, you do you have not committed that sin. So I'm gonna hide from God. My sin is unforgivable, so I'm gonna I will hide from God. Another one is I because of today's society, I expect my children to rebel. I expect them to act out, they're gonna get in drugs or or whatever, they're gonna sleep with their boyfriend or girlfriend. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'll try to control them. You know, like a lot of parents will, you know, because they think that their daughter is going to be, you know, she's going to be sexually promiscuous. So they immediately stick her on the pill, even if she's not, you know, some parents do that. So does that give you an idea of what, uh, what a negative expectation is and what an in inner vow is and result of that? Does anybody have any questions? We're good. I'm good. We're good. Okay, great. So we'll go on further. So your corresponding inner vows ensure that all of the spiritual energies being developed in your heart by net by your negative expectations have a focused avenue of release into the outer world. Whatever you have expected and vowed to get, you're going to get. You will have. It's that simple. If you see yourself as a failure, you promise failure and you are going to get it. Whenever you try something, you will know that you're going to fail at it. You know, uh, we've been um, reading, um, we've been reading the Bible from a, I've been trying to read the Bible for more of a, 
um, a first century or a biblical from the Jewish perception of it. And so in the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, or what we call the Pentateuch, uh, the Israelis, the Israelites confess over and over and over again that they are going to die in the wilderness. Do you remember mm -hmm. all the times you read about them complaining and that they're never mm -hmm. going to make it, especially when they sent the spies out and they and 12 spies uh, went out and, and 10 of them said, oh, we can't do it. We cannot defeat the enemy. But only two mm -hmm. of them said they could, you know, Joshua and Caleb. And what happened? They did not defeat the enemy. They could not defeat the enemy. In fact, what happened was that they, they were stuck in the wilderness for another 40 years, and they all had to die out. They mm -hmm. died out because they all had negative expectations. And it mm -hmm. was their children that went into the promised land. Mm -hmm. So they did not see. They, they died not seeing the promised land, but their children saw it. Their children entered in. Through this sobering truth, we can miss God's choicest blessings for our lives by believing for and confessing these demonic negatives rather than the Holy Spirit positives. You know, it's all about the perspective of our mind. You know, a lot, so many of us are, are in prison, in the prison of our minds, and the prison is our spirits. So how are we doing? It's 720. We're doing really well. And, you know, I just, at this point, I want to tell you about a dream I had. And I know I, I shared this dream a lot, and I don't know who I shared this with and who I didn't. But in my dream, I dreamt that I was in prison. And I dreamt that a, a lot of other people were in prison. I heard their voices all up and down the, the aisles, the hallways. And then while we were in prison, we heard the, the lions roar. There was a huge, the sound of lions roaring and roaring and we were all so scared we are all were so frightened because we we kept in hearing the roaring of those big huge lions and for some reason i don't know why but i i was i knew i was so full of fear um but i went over and i tried the door of my of my cell and i found that it was unlocked so i i carefully stepped out of the cell and I could hear the roaring of the lion, but something in me made me go down the hallway towards that, the sound of the roaring lions. Hmm. When I went into the room where the roaring lions were, you know what I found? I found a tape recorder. <laughs> that was all it was. It was just a tape recorder with, you know, <laughs> recording the sound of that roaring lion. The long lions, I think there were more because it, it was a loud roaring. So I ran down the hallway to all the other people locked in their cells. And I said, it's a fake. It's a fake. There's only a tape recorder. But oh. you know what? Nobody believed me. They did not see the lion. They did not see the tape recorder. And I knew what God was saying to me. And that, I believe that was, an, a, that was a, um, a picture of a negative expectation and, and also an inner vow. Mm -hmm. All of us are in prison cells, but our doors are unlocked mm -hmm. because we're believers in Yeshua, in Jesus. When you, were, when you gave your life, when you surrendered your life to the Lord, you know, he, he holds the keys. You know, we're no longer in prison. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. 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 We so are free. We are free. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. Free, free, free. Free, 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 free. That's just like when you're talking to people about God or Jesus, but they, you know, they just sit still. They don't like they don't believe you. They don't want mm -hmm. to, you know. They don't want to recognize him. They want to stay in their jail, like you said, you know, in their mind. Oh, what that's going to do for me? You know, you have to admit that it gets pretty comfortable in that jail cell. You know, it's familiar. <laughs> it's familiar. You don't, you don't know what's out. Like, I didn't even know what's outside of that, of that cell. Walking down the hall was very scary in my dream. It was, it was frightening. Um, and, but, you know, when you know your cell and you know what you, what's out, around you, even though it's, it's a prison, it still feels comfortable. 
And a yes. lot of people are there in whatever prison it is. You know, it could be any kind of a prison. Um, That's true. You know, fear. You know, I, um, I think you guys, I think I told you this, how when I was at, before I was a believer, of, I was married to somebody who was very controlling and abusive. And, and I'm a country girl. We grew up in Claire, Michigan, 3,000 people. Right, Carol? Right, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> it was 3,000 people in the middle of nowhere, in the middle, right in the middle of the center of the state of Michigan. We, I didn't even know what traffic was. We had four stoplights. And that was it. And anyway, well, I married a man from Syracuse, New York, which was not quite. <laughs> nothing at all like Claire, Michigan. And, uh, and he was abusive. He was controlling. And over the years, we, we married, we moved to Ohio, and then we moved to Syracuse. And over the years, I gave up my life, my driver's license. I became terrified of driving because every time I got behind the wheel, I was always told that I couldn't drive, that I was making too many mistakes and I couldn't drive. So I just gave up. I, um, you know, for, I think it was for about four years. I didn't drive a car, couldn't drive a car because I was frozen in fear, frozen in fear. And here we were living in Syracuse, New York, and, um, and so frightened out of my life. In fact, I was so scared. The McIntyres were loud. They were Irish, Scotch Irish Catholic. They always were arguing. Um, they always were fiercely competitive. All of them were college educated. Some of them even got their master's degree or going for their master's degree. And here I'm some country bumpkin in, in the middle of nowhere in Michigan. I was so scared. And all I did was sit in my little apartment and chain smoke and uh, read my books and watch TV. I couldn't even work. I couldn't even get a job. I, I just was locked in my apartment. That was my jail cell. But then, thanks to my sister Carol and Kathy, uh, they were telling me over and over again about Jesus and my grandmother and my best friend from high school seemed like I was surrounded by Christians. <laughs> and um, anyway, they were constantly telling me about the Lord. And, uh, and I was watching them, even though I made fun of them and ridiculed them and gave, especially gave Carol a hard time. And Carol can say that I did. <laughs> and, um, and, and, I, and I prophesied over you and said that you were going to be saved soon, remember? Yep. And you yeah. got angry at me. Yeah, I got mad at what she was going to work came through. <laughs> so, I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, Grandma Mac, my mom's a mom, came to visit, and she gave me a, a bag of books. And one of the books was Johnny by Johnny Erickson Tata. And suddenly, and I so I read the book, and suddenly it all came together. I saw that I just like Johnny, I was in prison. And, um, you know, I was, but I was not in the prison of my body. I was in the prison. Of my <laughs> yeah, it was, it was grandma, mom. It was grandma, your mom that gave me the book. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Actually, and, no, which grandma? Your, your mother. mother. Oh, okay. No, I didn't know if it was my mother or Ori's. No, it was your mother. <laughs> so anyway, all of it came together. I realized that I was in prison and I was, and after watching my sisters and my grandma and, especially the witness of my grandfather dying and seeing my grandma so filled with peace. She looked like a bride, Grandma Church. That was my dad's mom, uh, seeing that there was such a change in her life and a change in my sister's lives. I knew that there was a difference. And so um, I didn't know what to do after reading that book. I just knew that something it had something to do with Jesus. I wasn't quite sure. So I went to talk to my husband's Catholic priest and the one thing that he told me to do was to read the Bible and not to start in the Old Testament, but to start in the Gospel of Matthew. And I couldn't read any Bible. I had to read the Good News Bible, which was one of the easiest versions of those times. It's like the Living Bible today or the Message Bible. And so I read all the way through. I got through Romans chapter, the end of chapter, Romans chapter eight, when in all this time, I was thinking, wow, this Jesus dude is so cool. My goodness, he's such a cool guy. I could see him as a hippie, you know, like I was, you know. <laughs> and I could see and if a counter-revolutionary like Malcolm X, you know, and uh, Martin Luther King, who I admired, you know, like 
this this guy is cool, you know. And so I thought, well, if he was alive today, I would follow him. Well, I found out he was alive today, and I am I'm still following him forty years later. But uh, but anyway, all of that came together, and I, you know, after it all came together, I went I dropped out on my knees. I surrendered my life to the Lord, and when I got up off my knees, my life totally and radically changed. And I'll tell you, one by one, the Lord took me out of prison. I had, the first thing I had to do was get my driver's license. I had to go through all the driver's tests again. I had to go through the drive, all of it, you know, and I had, um, you know, first the driving lessons, then the driver's uh, test. And I had to go for my um, permit and then my license, just like a, a kid had to go through when they're 16 or 17, depending on the state you live in. And then I went out and got a job. And I, and I was, and I drove, you know, and God took care of everything. He locked, he unlocked, the prison door was unlocked for me and I was able to step out of it. But all of it was negative expectations. You know, like I was told, I know, I didn't know how to drive. I was a lousy driver. So I just stopped driving. You know, I did that, that, and I started saying inner vows. I'm, okay, I quit. I'm not driving anymore. That's an inner vow. Does that make sense to you? Um mm-hmm. And can, as I'm sharing this, I know I shared a little bit of my testimony, but think back on your lives and, you know, in the past or even now what you're dealing, what you're struggling with right now. And so what we're going to do is on page chap, on page two and your contributing strands, um, think of, let's right now, let's just think of a negative expectation and you don't have to, I need a pen. I'm going to write down with me, with you. Um, So write down um, some negative expectations. Think of it right now, either in the past or even now. Um, You know, something that somebody said to you, maybe your father said that you're you're something or another and you believed it. I I don't know how to manage money. So you don't know how to manage money. You're giving up. So let's write it right down. Let's write it down now. I should have written down a negative expectation, like something like um, yeah. I don't know. somebody said, like <clears throat> somebody, like somebody said, I was stupid in math, so I didn't even try. Something mm. like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I'm glad you said that, Carol. It's just my next one. <laughs> That's what I did when I came down here. I wasn't going to drive in Orlando. Sold my car. Uh, signed up away from the riders, re, driver's license. I got a identification now. Mm-hmm. That's all. A state ID. I'm too old to drive. <laughs> I keep getting lost just riding with these kids. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. <laughs> Let me know when you're done. <clears throat> I keep on thinking of more. <laughs> I thought there was only one, but my goodness, I got four of them. No. I got five. Well, I know that there was a lot of jail cells that I had to get myself out of. <clears throat> yeah, Lord, what negative expectations and contributing to do I expect to believe? That's what it says at the beginning. So, um, Yeah, it looks like uh, Nicole and Lynn are still writing. So uh, we'll sometimes you thinking or something. Uh, I know they keep coming up, don't they? You write down one thing and all of a sudden I wrote six down now so far. <laughs> you think about more and more of them. Yeah, like the things that we say about ourselves to yeah, to our friends about ourselves makes me think in fact i'm making me think twice okay are we then are you still writing or still thinking or are you done or no you're um you're muted Yes, so I'm done. Okay, and Sylvia, are you done? Um, I have three. I'm having a tough time, not because I don't have them. I do have them. I had to pray. I have to ask the Holy Spirit to, to help me because I know they are. I just cannot. They're not coming to my mind, so I ask the Holy Spirit to help me. That's fine. And right now, three is great. You know, even if you just had one, it's great because we can deal with, with that one. We're going to take it all the way across. And and I just, you know, if you want to do this, in fact, I recommend that you do maybe spend some uh, in your quiet time tomorrow or tonight. Um, think about it and write down, you know, do this exercise a little bit more often. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, right now you're kind of under, you're kind of under pressure too, because I'll, we only had like a few minutes and <laughs> okay so now that was the negative expectations and then the the inner vows you no know, as is a result of that negative expectation um so one of my um uh one of the things that Car carol had reminded me is that i i don't want to use um words or anything but i know that mom my mother had struggled in math and Carol and I have struggled in math. And then we had a- Not math, algebra. 
Okay, just algebra, but that's math. <laughs> <laughs> Never did catch it. Never did. <laughs> And so, but then we had Kathy, it's our sister, and she's a whiz at math, and she could have been an accountant. Um, and then my daughter, Carrie, has trouble with math. And so I always tell everybody, it's a family thing. I can't do math. And, you know, so we have a family, we got a, th a family thing, you know, going on. But no, we don't have to. And right now I can break that line, that, that bloodline. And my inner vow is, you know, as I, I'm going to say is that, we have a um, that there's a family, um, you know, that's a generational thing, um, you know, that I can't do math. Our math, it's not that I can't do math, I can do math. It's a struggle. It's not something that I do easily. Like I can write, I know how to spell, I can figure out words like that, like really crazy. I, I'm really good at spelling and everything and grammar, but math was not my strong subject. So I can't do math. I'm stupid in math. What would be an, a good inner vow? Smart. I stopped. I stopped doing math. Yeah, stop doing that. I'm smart. I can do math. No, no, that's it. That's the other. That's the next uh, step. We're just doing the inner vow right now. Now that's the, you're just, you're uh, suggesting a third step. So um, I stopped. Well, well, why 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 try? Why try? Yeah, why exactly. Try? exactly. I yeah. don't. Need math. That's what you could say. What? I don't need the math. I don't need to take math. I don't need to learn math. You yeah. know, I just thought of what I tell everybody now. I say that calculators and computers were invented for, for people like me. The phone. <laughs> <laughs> so you just need to push the buttons in. Use the calculator. Yeah, I do all the time. Believe me, it's so on my phone. I praise God, I have a calculator on my phone. <laughs> Thank God for calculators. Yes. Okay, are made for a, a people like me. Okay, who um who would feel comfortable reading out one of their neg negative expectations? I will. Okay, Margarita, go ahead. Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm going to say what my, my parents, they never, thank God, they never said anything negative. But my when I was married, uh, I had a lot of things that I wanted to accomplish. But um, my husband, well, my ex-husband, he, he wasn't supportive. So he will, he will slander me with words. I would say you're a moron. You are. You are. You don't do anything right. Uh, you will never amount to anything, or you will never get your license. You were. You. You're here to be to serve me and to have my children, and that was. So I was like, really, my mind was really messed up so, because I believed the lies that this man was telling me. Mm -hmm. So I feel, you know, my, my inner thing was fear. I'm not going to do anything. I, I'm dumb. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get, I'm going to be able to drive. I'm fear. I, my fear is I will never get my license. Yeah. And I, so will, those I will not amount to anything. Those were your inner vows. Yeah. He, he said, your husband said you were dumb. You never amount to anything. And then your inner vows. Can you see that? Was I, yeah. okay. I'm not going to drive. I'm yes. not going to. I'm not yeah. going to go anywhere. I'm not going to do anything right. because my husband says fear. I'm dumb. Yes, fear. Yeah, fear. I'm afraid of everything because my husband says I'm, and that's an inner vow. Can you see the difference? He yes. Says, you believed what he said. I, that's he an meant, expectation. Yes. Yep. And but then, thank, thank God that he set me free from that jail. <laughs> I have my license and I went to college and I graduated. And I did everything that I wanted to do. Thank you, Dean. And you're more. Now you're Thank teaching you. your grandson to drive. Yes. And you're now <laughs> teaching your grandson to drive. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. Glory yes. to God. I taught I taught mm -hmm. other people and they got the license. So I'm able to bless people. Go, oh, Maggie. <laughs> you are. You Thank are. <laughs> yes, you are a blessing right now, Margarita. You are a great blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He did it all. 
He did it all. Okay. Daddy so Shad did it all. He did it all. Okay, we'll do one more. Does some one more person want to read a negative expectation and then uh, let's come up with an inner vow? I'll do a quick one. Okay. I said, um, I can pray, but I cannot teach to pray. Mm. Okay, so I cannot. So I can. um, was there a reason that I cannot teach to pray? That's an inner vow. Um, That's an inner vow. Was, so was there a reason why? Was there a negative expectation? that you could not teach to pray. And I, and I believe that's a lie out of the pit of hell because you're a marvelous mm-hmm. teacher. <laughs> I guess then maybe, I guess it's just lack of confidence. Okay, so I don't have the confidence to okay. teach prayer. Therefore, okay. I cannot teach prayer. Do you, you see the difference? Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's the inner vow. And that, and that restricts you. That keep, that's the, the inner vow is what keeps you in jail. It did until this year. Amen. Amen. You're teaching now. <laughs> and it's Amen. still, I'm still, you know, working through it every, every week. It's like, Lord, help me to teach others. Yeah. I'm surprised, Sylvia. I thought you taught you because you were a leader at a house of restoration an intercessory leader. And I thought you taught them all the time. I have sat yeah. in some of your prayer meetings and you and were, I, and I did, and I did, but I, I did it, you know, like when you do it with fear, you do it out of fear, you just do it. And I still lacked confidence. But this lack of confidence all came out of getting, which is the, my other negative, is about getting older, mm-hmm. that I thought I'm, I'm too old. No. Nope. And I have stopped myself from doing things because I, you know, it's, it's too late. I should have done it back then. Now I'm too old to do it. I was never too old. Yeah. I just pray that Caleb anointing all over you, Sylvia, that you just what Caleb said that he was um, he was stronger and better at 85 than he was at 45. Of course, you're nowhere near 85. I know that you're not. You're not nearly as old as I am. Just as strong. 61? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're a baby. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I, I'm going to be celebrating a new decade next next year. Awesome, awesome. And it's not 60. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. I've taken on the job as being greeter at church. Yes, you did. And a couple of weeks ago, a gentleman came up to me and was talking to me, and he's so funny, he said something about age, you know, that he was older than the hills. And uh, he's still walking, doing, getting around. He was proud of that fact. Mm-hmm. I swear. He said he was older than the hills. Yeah. I said, well, I've got you beat. He's 85. I said, well, I'm 88. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You, I got your genes, mom. People think I'm a lot younger than I am, <laughs> really, too, <Yeah. laughs> like you. <laughs> yes. And that's a blessing. <laughs> that's I got a biggest blessing. kick out of that. Okay. <laughs> so, so now, older than the hills. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So let's turn the page. And uh, those ones that, especially that we were dealing with, um, Sylvia, with that, uh, I can't. I can't, I, I don't know how, I can't teach prayer because I don't, I don't have the confidence to pray. And Margarita, what you had shared about, I, I'm a moron, I'm dumb, I can't, I can't drive, but, um, and then I have an, and then, therefore I'm stupid. My husband told me I'm dumb, therefore I am stupid, making that inner vow. And myself, um, I can't do math, so therefore I stopped. Calculators and computers are made for people like me, <laughs> but I said, Okay, we're going to turn the page. It's the steps. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Let's say if you have something, and then like I don't have no inner vows. So, what do I do? Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's talk about it. Read. Can you read what it is? Can you say it? Or... People don't accept me because of my race, because of where I come from. But what was the last part? People don't accept me because of my race. Because of where I come from. Where I come from. Mm-hmm. So, what but I don't have 
Okay, in their vows to... because what I would, I don't let that bother me. Okay, did uh, you wrote it down so it, it must still bother yeah. you? What are you? What are your thoughts when uh, when people don't accept you? Um, what do you um, do? You say, okay, therefore I'm going to not. I'm going to avoid that person. Therefore, I'm not going to talk to that person. You do that. Well, I don't get in my way to talk to that person. But if that person speak, and I will speak, or that person need help, I do. But I don't get in my way to be friendly with that person. Okay, mm -hmm. so therefore, I'm not going to be as friendly to that person as I would be with someone else. That's an inner vow. Oh, okay. Does that, does that make sense to you? Okay. I will not be friendly. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay. So, okay. To separate it from other people. So yeah, separate yourself from those that kind of person who who is um you know who doesn't accept me because mm -hmm. of my race or because of the way I talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're but we're gonna turn the okay, you're writing that down. Okay. Um <laughs> turning the page. Mm -hmm. On page three, okay. you see in that left column, it says, however, God I says. says. Yeah. So, okay, uh, Margarita, we'll start with you. Well, uh, uh, Maggie. Go. Maggie. So your husband said you were dumb and you. And My ex-husband. Ex okay, your ex-husband. Ex-husband. He's not in the picture anymore. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> and so um, after, okay, you, because uh, you, you, you already started it uh, and I had to stop you because you've already went to step three, but step three. Okay, step two, one is step one is your husband called you dumb, called you a moron, and there and he told you he couldn't drive, he couldn't do anything. And so step two is that you stopped. You stopped doing anything and everything because you believed what he said. Step three is, however, God says, what does God say about you in that situation? God said you can do all things through Christ that strengthen you. Amen. You can do it, Margarita. Yep. You can do it. So write that down next to it. So follow that along. Follow the, and then say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what God says. All things. All things. Even oh. math. Even math. <laughs> <laughs> and Nicole, um, people not accepting you because of your race and because of the way you talk, because of your accent. Um, therefore, I tend to not talk to them or I, you don't go out of your way. I, I'm not saying that you, you don't talk because you do talk to them, but you don't go out of your way to talk to them. But what does God say about that? God said, I love you. You're my child. That's right. The country is mine. Yep. So that's the way I... That's the way I raise, I, I raise you, whatever the one you want to say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you belong, and you belong to him. Yeah, you belong, belong to him. the Lord, yes, and he accepts you the way you are. Oh, you with everlasting oh, love. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Okay, so write that down. It looks like you already are now. Now, Sylvia, um, mm -hmm. you were afraid. You didn't have the confidence to teach on prayer, even though you are an intercessor and you pray all the time, and you're a powerful intercessor. Thank you. Uh, you mm -hmm. are. That's a, that's a fact. Um, mm -hmm. I can't teach it. Therefore, I I will not uh, until to, uh, just recently. I I mm -hmm. will not. I'll avoid times of teaching. I will not teach on prayer. Okay, but what does God say about that? Um, I believe he says he will lead me and he will guide me in the way that I should go. Yeah. And so that's my prayer every week before I, my, my meetings. <laughs> <laughs> With your knees shaking and you still do it. <laughs> I do, I do it every, every Wednesday. I do it afraid. Um, so which is why just why I mentioned it today because I know that it's still a struggle that um, he's building that confidence in me, but I, it's slowly being built up. 
And yes, Audrey, um, it, it's something that's come about now because there was a time where I, I guess because I stopped, mm -hmm. uh, I moved from church, yeah. uh, and so going back was like, um, it was, it was difficult and it was part of the enemy to say, you know, why get involved now? Why, why teach now? You know, it's so needed. And, mm -hmm. but God kept saying no. So I did start the, the, the small group on prayer and we're supposed to stop in the fall. There's three semesters, but they wouldn't let me stop. They, they begged me to continue. So I had to ask permission at the church to continue to stay. So we're doing that. And God has been really good. You got a permanent group there, girl. <laughs> so you, you've already um, answered step four. Um, that's what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is that you've already started a group, um, a prayer, a, a teach, and you are teaching prayer. So that's, that is uh, step four. And I, I think, see. Nicole, you were, and I know that Margarita had already gone to step four. She was always way, she's already way ahead of us. So she's already doing it. Yeah. She faced down her lions and saw it was just a tape recorder. So. <laughs> So yes, God says I'm a I'm a, li I'm, I'm a liar. Uh, what is it? A, a slayer. I slayed it down. <laughs> a lion slayer. In the power yes. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You go, girl. I slayed it down. <laughs> you go. Yes. And so you you can write that down. A purpose in the Holy Spirit to be a lion slayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, praise God. So, so you see how this is when you be, and you can you guys can do this at home. You can do this. Um, this is really good to to be to make yourself sensitive to um, to where you are, mm -hmm. um, and also be, start being uh, um, sensitive to what your what comes out of your mouth, uh, what mm -hmm. you're speaking, you know, about yourself. Um, you know. Um, you know, one of the things I wrote down is that I'm, a, I'm a woman and I'm incapable of leading men because I was always told that I cannot lead men, be a leader to men. Of course, I had men in my group always. There was, there was always kinds of men. So therefore, I did not spend as much time leading them, teaching them, or even looking for men to teach as I did before. But God says he's called me to be a leader to all people, not just to women. Amen. Yes. Amen. I amen. agree with you on that. Yes. Okay, Lynn. Okay. God bless you. We love you. Okay. Lord, we just pray for Lynn. I pray you are blessed yes, Lord. her in, your, in the mighty name of Yeshua. Bless yes, her. Always possible, Lord. Thank yes. you. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is, uh, that's basically, so you understand now what a negative expectation is and what an inner vow is. Because some people get those two confused. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but they're two separate things. Even though they're conjoined together, they're come together, but they're two separate things. And one thing too is um, as you become sensitive what comes out of your mouth, but when you're ministering to someone, you know, like you, let's say somebody's asking you for prayer and they ask you for, because uh, they're, they're struggling with the situation. Listen to their language. How are they expressing themselves, you know, when they tell you about what's going on in their lives? Because so many of us say, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm too yes. this, too that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and see that what they're doing is that really what they're doing is they're cursing themselves. Cursing yeah. themselves. That's, you know, they have inner vows that they need to be broken. I had a huge inner vow about the, my mothering my daughter and I had and I didn't even realize I was I was proud of that vow that I made and then I had it took a, a prayer minister who was ministering to me about something totally different she said Audrey that's an inner vow and you need to break it you don't make vows like that and I go really mm -hmm. so yeah I you know so that was really crazy so just Listen to your language, listen to the language of others as you're ministering to them and praying for them. And I know all of us are, you know, it's not to say that you are, you have a ministry or you're like in full-time ministry or out there um, ministering to all kinds of people, but there are people that come to you, come to you and ask for prayer. 
They come That's to you and they know you pray and they, they know, or they're your friend, you know, and hey, can you help me with this? And just be careful, listen to their language, listen to how they present it and, and hear the negative negativity in their language. And, you know, think of yourself as David, you know, he's one of my heroes, you know, in the Bible. Yeah, he, uh-huh. he was the runt of a litter. You know, he was the youngest kid. You know, yes, he was. I can just see him. In fact, I could just see him as a skinny little kid with wild red hair. You know? <laughs> I see him, you know, hair everywhere. You know, this this shepherd who was out in the who was out with in the fields. You know, they didn't even think he was worth um, having in the house, so they set him out in the fields to take care of the sheep. You know, and um, but here, you know, he went out to um. And my one of my favorite stories is that he went out to uh, to deliver food to his brothers who were fighting in the war, and everybody was cowering in their tents because this big Mm -hmm. guy, Goliath, was making threats. And he said, Who is this uncircumcised? Yeah, who is this? How dare he make threats against Mm -hmm. the the children of the most high God? My God. Yeah, they forgot who they were in God. They forgot who they were. And they were cowering in their tents. And here, this runt of the litter, a, te- a skinny little teenage boy, he goes out there with a slingshot and five smooth stones, and he takes him down because he believed he could. He believed he could. He could do it. And that's every one of us. You know, when God calls you to do something, believe me, you can do it. You know, you, Sylvia can teach. In fact, I can see you teaching a lot of people about how to pray. Thank you. Yes, I can see that. And wherever God calls you to, whatever he calls you to, whom he calls, he equips. And he, that's always, right. and he always calls us to something that's much bigger than us. Much mm-hmm. bigger than us. Oh, my gosh. When I got revelation, what he was calling me to, I said, who, me? I'm just mm-hmm. a woman that nobody takes seriously. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, nobody takes me seriously. I'm just some lady, some single mom yeah are you kidding you got there's somebody else who's much more capable than me to do what i'm doing but mm-hmm. no he called me to do it he's called me to do what he's called me to do is i'm a leader i'm a state prayer leader and mm-hmm. you know and taking down the giants i'm that little david the wild the wild hair dumb mm-hmm. <laughs> red-headed kid except for i'm not a not a man or a boy <laughs> hey audrey yes i like the scripture we used a while ago was, uh, I can do all things. Yep. Christ who strengthens me. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you go back to that scripture, also the context of that verse is, Paul was, said he could live in lack, but he can live with plenty. Mm. Because in all things, I have learned to be content. Amen. In Christ. Yes. So Amen. This inner valley you know, that, that, that God wants us to have, is because we can find contentment in him. Yes. yes. If we have contentment in him, then those, those other words that people spoke against us, right. power just fades away. Right. You know, like even the, to be content in all things, that's what the Lord really had ministered to me in that scripture, um, Art, is that, you know, I used to say that uh, because I'm a single mom, um, never had two nickels that rub against rub together. I used to say I'm poor, you know, that I'm poor. Um, you know, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't go to Israel. <laughs> I can't, first of all, I could not move to Hartford. Like I, I, I'm too poor. I'm too this. I'm too that. But, uh, but I knew that I had to go through some, some, you know, some, you know, some poor times, sometimes when I, I don't have and times when I do have. But you know what? I can do all things who Christ strengthens me. He gives me my daily bread on a daily basis. He doesn't give it to me weekly. He doesn't give it to me monthly or yearly. It's um, it's daily. And to to trust him, to believe in him for all of our, that all of our needs, not our wants, not our desires. Yes. Our needs would be met. Met. Amen. You know, that he never sees his children suffering or as he's never sees his people suffering or his children begging for bread. And, yeah. you know, and he provides and he provides in the most interesting ways. Mm. You know, uh, you know, I prayed for decades that I could go on full time salary be, in a full time ministry because I've been called to this. 
and I've been doing what I'm doing for over 20 some odd years. And my gosh, it's exhausting sometimes to work full time and then go home and do all this other stuff. What I yeah. really love to do this ministry. And I've done it for so many years and at begging the Lord, Lord, is there a benefactor out there? Is there some way I could, that my salary could be made? And it never was. It never, it was a part-time, but never full-time. And, but you know what? I never, he never saw his people suffering or his children begging for bread. And, and mm -hmm. I had to remember too, that Paul, you know, Saul of Tarsus, Paul, um, he was bivocational and he, he's our apostle. You know, there were, there were mm -hmm. years when he worked in ministry full-time and there were years when he was out there doing, being a tent maker, you know, yeah. and so, yeah. And uh, that was really a great role model as opposed to what we see going on now, because, you know, I was hanging out with people from other states who were, you know, they were, they were doing all right financially. They were in full-time ministry. And here I am struggling. I, everything that came out of, uh, that had to be paid for, a lot of it came out of my own pocket. But, you know, I'm strong. I'm a young, I was a young, I'm still a young woman. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, even though I, I paid for a lot of out of my pocket, that stuff got done. What God called me to do got done. And it doesn't matter where the money came from. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And I had to deal with that, you know. So, yeah, however God does it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does that make sense? Yes. It does. Yeah. Any questions, any comments or? It's really good. You're good? Very good. Okay, so it's only 10 after, but we can end early. Um, might be better, better for all of us. Next week, um, let me get my outline again. Uh, hey, Audrey, that scripture that you said is Psalms 37, 25. I, what I can do all things? Well, no, what, no, not that. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not not seeing the righteous forsaken on his seed begging bread. Mm. Yes, that is so true. That means our children and our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 That's so true. And yes. he takes care of us. He certainly takes care of us. You know, yes, it does. You know, and it does. Like I said, he takes care of our daily needs. Not weekly, yes. not monthly, not yearly. And yeah, I'm not wearing designer clothes and I'm not living in a big house, um, you know, but God provides. He provides yes, he does. different ways. Yeah, he's, he's, and, you know, it's kind of funny. Like I, I prayed for money. I, I would pray. I prayed and prayed and prayed for money for a car. That's one of my things. You know, when, years ago when I was living over on Brown Street, I my car was dying. It was an awful. It was a Chevy Cavalier. And I'll never buy another Chevy in my life. If anybody's a Chevy fan, I'm sorry. But I no, I'm not sorry. But <laughs> I just don't like Chevrolets. But uh, the car was dying. And uh, anyway, I was praying and praying and praying that the Lord would provide me money, enough money to buy a car. Well, the Lord never provided me enough money to buy my car. The Lord provided me a car. That's mm. right. Yeah, the Lord bought me a car. <laughs> May, Thank may you, I give Jesus. a testimony? Um, may, I give, may I give yeah, a testimony of God's economy? Yeah. Um, well, Mama's door here before she moved in was not very good. It was, it was, anyways, I prayed, you know, for a door for Mama's bedroom so she could have a decent door. And instead of getting the money to go buy a door, a friend of mine was remodeling their house they had an extra door they didn't need and they, and they gave it to us and it absolutely matches all the other doors and praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's daddy God. He do that's, like that. that's our that's God. God. Thank you, Papa. That's Thank our you, Papa. daddy. Yes. He's our daddy, our Papa. Yes. And you know what? The Lord this also the puppy. the second car. Now I got, I'm on my second car that was given to me free of charge. Mm -hmm. oh, right. Jesus. Yeah, and both cars were beautiful. Yeah, the Kia lasted 12 years. It was a, you know, it was an economy car, but it was really dirt, sturdy and durable. And I called her Ruby, my Ruby red slippers, because somebody gave me a Wizard of Oz uh, prophecy. <laughs> and, uh, and she was my Ruby red slippers. And now 
I have a pearl of great price. I have a pearly white car. So pearl, pearl, pearl. Pearl, yeah. <laughs> How God provides. He yes, provides. he does. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the same thing too is about I didn't, I was not making my rent. And I and I was living with somebody, but I, I and I know the Lord had told me that it was time for me to leave my job. And but I couldn't afford living, even living in living in Hartford anymore. Now I have a beautiful little apartment. It's oh my nice, it is perfect for my perfect size for me. It is it's affordable housing, and my rent is according to my income, which is not at all. What? Thank you, Very Jesus. God is provided, and it's in a beautiful area, Rocky Hill, one of a, a really nice area. After yeah. living fourteen years of hearing sirens and gunshots and cars being broken into i praise god that i'm in a place where i feel safe so praise yeah. god yeah. And i can afford yeah he's a good god and i'm going to israel yay yes, yes. hallelujah Amen. Yes. you know i i teach this in in house of good hope i've been teaching the people especially if they think that they can't go to Israel. They can't do this. They can't do that. I said, yes, you can. If God tells you that you can, if God calls you to do it, you can. He provides. Even what yes, seems impossible is possible. When are you going to Israel? October 28th through November 6th. Okay. Yeah. And so far, all I need is another uh, $1,300 and... Everything will be paid for, and already somebody told me that they're going to they're going to give me a thousand. So, um, praise, God. So praise God, it's coming through. I'm going to Israel, <laughs> and Margarita is coming with me. Yes, I'm going to Israel. Margarita is coming Ooh. with me. <laughs> that is and, good. Yep. So, and so is um, Damaris, and so is Lucy. <laughs> yeah. All four of us are going. Oh my gosh, that's so. And that was another thing that was so shocking and so surprising. I, I knew that I knew that I knew that God was calling me to go to Israel in 2019. And I thought, um, okay, I'm going to go by myself. I'll go with, you know, this is a part of a missions group, that, uh, a missions tour. Before I knew it, four people, including Margarita, said, oh, I'm going with you. What? <laughs> yeah, well, the yeah. Lord has said that I was going back. He, yeah, you were, yeah. And then was, now he was I, telling me I'm going back. So I said, okay, Lord. Yep. He told me I was yeah. going back too. And, and it was so wild is that we had not four, but we had six people go of House mm -hmm. of Good Hope. We're a, at that time, we were a ministry of 12 people. So half our people went to Israel, half mm -hmm. of our, my ministry. I couldn't believe that. Oh my gosh. And the other what half. What year is it you're going? Israel. What year? This year. This year. Yeah, October in the fall. 28th. October. Let me know if you don't have enough. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> Mwah. I love you, Mom. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> well, that's putting it to good use. <laughs> Praise It'll God. Be more. It'll be putting it to good use. Ah, uh, thank you. Because you, the first time I went to Israel, you were my roommate. You and I, I went together. <laughs> It'd be fun to do it again, huh? Yeah, that would be. I know no, that. No, 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 I'm too clumsy anymore. <laughs> I know last time you said that was your last time to go, that you're only going to go once when you, you just get yourself. I did yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> I did it once. That's enough. That's enough for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this, what I'm doing is not, it's not going to be a tour like we, you and I went, Mom. That um, was fun. We're going to prayer houses and churches and we're praying for the leaders. We're going to yes. listen. One of the things I really remember what? is going to the top of that tower, all those steps, and coming back down. <laughs> Kathy was in front of me and you were behind me, so I wouldn't fall. Yeah. I, I knew that I had a panic attack too. That was such a narrow place. <laughs> <laughs> We were the, the the stairs went like this all the way up, know, all the way up, and, and our shoulders touched the walls. It was so narrow. Oh, it was so narrow. <laughs> I had no I handlebars there. either. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, and it went way, oh, way, way up. straight up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna go there. <laughs> 
It was I don't interesting. Think, yeah, it was interesting. But yeah, it was really, it was really pretty. What, what we're going to do is we're going to all the way through Israel. We're going to start in Galilee and go all the way down to Beersheba. We're going to visit different prayer houses. We're not going to visit very many sites, uh, but we'll be praying for the leaders and the pastors there. And we're going to, we're just going to spend that time in intercession and prayer. It's really, really going to be powerful. I'll be praying for you. Thank you. Aw. Pray for me too, Mama. Pray for Maggie too. Because <laughs> she's, she's coming with me. <laughs> yeah, Maggie's coming with me. <laughs> oh, she is. She yes. Is. Pray for me too. <clears throat> You're going to? Yes. Oh, that's marvelous. You love. Thank it. you. Yeah. There's four of us going from House of Good Hope. Yeah. I thought the, uh, 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 what's your name she was going? Who? Elsie. What happened to Elsie? No, not Elsie. No, she decided not to. Oh, okay. Okay. Damaris and Lucy are coming too. What's your name? She will come to the... Uh, Hilda? She don't want to tell me if I was going to go and then it would be roommate. I forgot her name. Really? Oh, she come to the uh, tabernacle prayer all the time. Oh, Sandra. Sandra. Yeah, she's going. Yeah, she's yeah, she's yeah, she's kind of. I could consider her house a good hope too. She so lives down. Six of you are going. Yeah, she lives down in Stamford, Connecticut. <coughs> yeah. How many down near Greenwich? Pardon. Okay. How many are going? Altogether, there's thirty six of us. Wow. Yeah, there'll be thirty six, but. Four from House of Good Hope. That's a big group this year. It's a bigger group than we went last year. So it was uh -huh. 22 last time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It'll be nice. You know, you, do you remember Paul and Chris Tranchell, Margarita? Who? He's that tall no. guy with no. blonde no. hair. You don't remember him? Because oh. he used to visit me. Oh, of course, I visited him. And he came to Awaken the Dawn when I was running this. the recording, right? Pardon? Oh, let me turn it off. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, let's turn it off. 